Okay, I think we're going to get started now. Uh, we have a full schedule today, so we want to make sure that we have a chance for everyone to present their information so you can get everything that you need. Um, hi, my name is Charlene Chin. I'm from Sandisk LLC and welcome to the SDA virtual global workshop. Just so everyone is aware, uh, we will be recording this session and folks will be able to access and play back on the SDA public website. And if you also look at the GoToWebinar banner on the right hand side, you will see a section for handouts that you can go ahead and download, as well as a place for chat for any questions that you might have to any of the panelists. So today we will be covering a number of topics related to uh, one of the latest specifications developed by the SDA, which is SD Express. So we have a various number of people presenting today. Um, Kaz Nakano will be giving an introduction to SDA and an update on the technology. Yossi Pinto, our SDA chairman, will review guidelines for host implementation of SD Express. Miki Takahashi from GRL will introduce the SD Express UHS2 verification program. And then we have several SDA members sharing their plans around SD Express, including Anson Fan from Faison, Zinan Fan from Amphenol, Julia Huang from Lexar, Rick Neal from Amp Inc., and Jen Sherry from Delkin Devices. Uh, we have a tight schedule, so let's get started. So what is the SDA? Um, the SD Association was established in 2000 to develop and promote SD memory card storage standards. SD memory cards are the de facto removable storage medium and has been broadly adopted by the market. We are a big consortium of around 800 member companies from the SD ecosystem, from media, hosts, connectors, and all sorts of affiliated solutions, and we encourage you to join us. So without further ado, Kaz, please take us a little deeper into the SDA and the current technologies. All right, thank you, Sharon. And uh, everyone, uh, welcome to the, uh, you know, the first ever show up here at the USA of our global workshops. And uh, I hope, uh, actually, I'm a, you know, uh, an administrator and, uh, you know, a responsibility for this global workshop, uh, kind of, uh, you know, marketing promotions work as a marketing committee chairman. So today I'd like to introduce the global uh, SDA and technology updates. Next page, please. Now, today's agenda is a very basic organization chart and license scheme and the SDA membership, followed by the you know, standardized specification updates, the extension to the SD Express. Next page, please. Yeah, this is the uh, overall uh, organization chart under the board. Uh, we have a president and a major three committees, uh, technical committee, compliance committee, and marketing. And, uh, you know, each committee have their own uh, responsibility and their uh, charters and objectives. And specifically, technical committee make a physical and file system and all those testing specifications. And compliance committees is in charge of uh, the you know, responsibility for the test tool development and market inspections and conformance uh, of our members' products. And I'm uh, you know, uh, in charge of the marketing committee for logo development and a public website and the technology promotion virtually and on site using SD brochures and their uh, you know, exhibitions and this kind of uh, seminars and workshops uh, for market adoption of our technologies. And uh, actually, uh, Shireen introduced, we have around 800 uh, member companies and 50% is Japanese, and uh, Taiwanese in the US and 10% and so on. So uh, member fee is you know, uh, two kinds, and executive membership and uh, general membership. Next place, please. Yeah, this is the uh, license scheme. Uh, we have a basic specification developed by SD3C LLC and who would like to make the actual card product or host ancillary product, uh, you know, they need to make a, you know, agreement, uh, CLA and HALA. Whereas the association is developing extension of the basic SD technology 
and uh, you know the version one and 1.1 was made by SD3C and we are now up to version 8 adding a uh, new specification by SD standards and those person and company would like to develop and have an access to SD specifications they need to be our members and also a license agreement for logo usage so next page please Yes, these are the benefits comparison uh, that you may be able to check later on our public website. But uh, we are, the privileges of our executive member is to be the board member and the voting capability. Next page, please. And these are the uh, our FCA officers. And uh, you know Hiroyuki Sakamoto is the president, former technical committee chairman. And uh, Yoshi, uh, who is you know supporting our you know all works as a chairman, and today we uh, he'll make some uh, presentation as well, and treasurer and executive you know directors. Next page, please. So we have a uh, twelve uh, companies. Uh, just one Indian company stepped down last month, as well, uh, unfortunately. But uh, we are very healthy, inviting global uh, board members and a uh, you know high quality level of their you know memory vendors. Next page, please. Yeah, I'm the editing marketing committee, and they you know as guided uh, applications and the webs and, and the regional activities and logos are developed under the uh, each working group's member support. Next page, please. So this is a technical committee. Uh, so you know the chairman and the uh, technical committee chairman. Uh, committee chairman is uh, uh, is the uh, Yoshi. And uh, uh, under here uh, we have uh, several working groups. And the specification YG is the most active uh, you know working group uh, headed by uh, Michael of the SunDesk and a mechanical specification and the uh, you know UHS and the specifically activated the ESSD uh, PCI TG. And there are some are security workings. Next page, please. So today, uh, actually, we are inviting uh, SVP ad hoc, uh, you know, member uh, from GRL today. And uh, under, uh, you know, two gentlemen of Japanese uh, conference committee has operated uh, to help support interoperability of the host and card devices by our members and test two evaluations for those uh, members who need such kind of support. And, uh, you know, SVP is a very new one, uh, which will be introduced later by Miki of the Granite River Labs, uh, who is our one of the designated labs. So we have three kinds of, uh, you know, designated labs under Compliance Wagi. So Arian, very famous, Panasonic, used to. And the, you know, most activated, you know, the supported designated lab as of today is Granite River Labs. Is specifically focusing on a very high, you know, uh, differential signal or you know PCI interface uh, support for uh, you know uh, conforming the signal integrity. Next page, please. Yeah, here uh, we have a specification a structure, and uh, you know, phase of part one, two, three is a major part in you know, making the physical layers or file systems, even the security. Next page, please. Yeah, uh, SD card types is uh, you know differentiated into major major two you know standard form factor. One is standard, and the other is micro SD. And the function is a uh, you know rather variety. And uh, we are now uh, supporting the uh, memory capacities up to 128 terabyte. And the actual marketed product as of today is one terabyte micro SD is now uh, you know in the market. And the bus interface, uh, the conventional uh, power interface to the uh, LBDS type, change it, migrate it. And uh, you know, current ma most uh, marketed product is 80% in UHS-1. And uh, we are now uh, trying to migrate higher, faster uh, bus interface to the uh, PCIe. Uh, namely, we named it uh, SD Express, which is the main uh, objectives of this uh, seminar today to be introduced in detail by each company colleagues. So we have a PCI Gen 3 to uh, PCI e Gen 4 by two lane as of today to be shown on the next page, please. 
Yes, uh, this is the uh, just the logos introduction and logos uh, by the uh, you know capacity and the bus mark, which is the on the you know very end of the right side. We have a new SD Express mark beside Gen3 and four adapted. And a speed class is very conventional one. It's just now migrating from conventional speed class to the video speed class, supporting up to 8K you know ultra HD video recording purpose. Next page, please. Yeah, here we have the focus, that's the express specification, which will be introduced in detail. And uh, here we have uh, uh, PCI Gen 4x2, almost 4 gigabyte per second uh, theoretical performance, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, challenged technology uh, by the uh, uh, connector vendors like Ampeno. He will make her, uh, we will make, uh, we will uh, get her updated connector information today for such a high frequency support including micro SD. So PCI Gen 1, Gen 2, uh, sorry, PCI Gen 3 and Gen 4, and multiple uh, lane support is now specified at the SDA. Next page, please. Yeah, this is the uh, speed bus mode. Uh, some are a lot of uh, specific, but very simply uh, to be focused the PCI Gen 3 and 4 today. So uh, one lane, two lanes, uh, which is re uh, regulated by SDA on a version spec 7 and 8. Next page, please. Okay, so the express card background uh, is specifically migrating much higher uh, data interaction by 5Gs or even other new applications on the gaming applications or much channel recording by the video captures. So even autonomous vehicles is shifting from UFS 3.1 or 4, uh, sorry, UFS specification 3.1 or UFS 3, uh, 4.0 and 5, 6, you know, regulated already. So everything is moving forward and upwards for higher, you know, data interactions. So we SDA decided uh, to shift from conventional SD interface to the PCIe uh, to be adapted into this ki these kinds of variety of new uh, you know, high-speed interactions, edge computings, and so on. Even the, uh, you know, uh, client PCs, a set of a box on, you know, edge you know, computing and in, uh, in interactions. Next page, please. Okay, so advantages ladder, you know, are advanced in the PCI interfaces, which is standardized by, you know, PCIe and NVMe, you know, uh, you know, you know, bodies. So uh, it is very standard and easy adaption. Yeah, nowadays, even the test, you know, verifications by, you know, JEDEC standards. Next page, please. Okay, so summary today is, uh, you know, focused on the, you know, we SDA have, you know, regulated our specification on a standard SD interfaces, UHS one, two, three. Uh, which is uh, regulating up to 624 megabytes per sec. And uh, not only for the, you know, uh, the higher speed bus interaction, but neither, you know, uh, implementation for the mobile devices, especially the mobile phones for application learning support. So we specified application performance class A1, A2, uh, almost micro SD standards and st those marketed card is now having these marks. And the ever being uh, technology for low robot stage signaling is a little bit uh, difficult situation. Better, you know, uh, chipset vendors or you know, baseband chip vendors uh, like Calcoms and others are you know thinking in specific uh, ways to uh, you know challenge the lower voltage support for longer battery life. And finally, the, uh, specifically uh, today, we would like to introduce in detail what SD Express R. So I want to explain in detail. But uh, we have two kinds of, uh, you know, logos on uh, the short version and long version, uh, which could be introduced today. So next page is a specific summary that we, you can have us. Uh, yes, SDA office, SDA office is already, you know, supported subvendor. And today, uh, you know, the Jamie and the Berinda is well supporting this event coordination. Thank you so much. So very end, uh, please have a visit. Uh, to our very new, uh, you know, voucher booth, which has just uploaded yesterday. So please have an access to the SD Association public website 
and each icon you can have an app uh, you know you can get a, you know updated information including SD expresses so this is the uh, right information and uh, get a good capture today by all our presenters from SD Association thanks so much hello everybody uh, I'm Yossi Pinto uh, SDA chairman and also the technical committee chair and I'll present today a presentation on the SD Express host implementation. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I will start with the short overview of the SD standard evolution. Uh, with more emphasis on the recently introduced new SD Express specifications. And that will be followed with the, the, the core of this presentation, which is more detailed description of our recommended method of how to implement SD Express host. Okay, so just uh, before we proceed, let's uh, look at that. Uh, uh, standard evolution. The SD Association was uh, formed in the in January 2000, and actually last year uh, the SDA has celebrating um, its 20th anniversary. Uh, this standard was uh, started at the time in which uh, there were a few other type of cards, as we all know, and form factors, and uh, uh, very fast it got a big momentum and adoption and actually in 2005 uh, the SDA released a micro SD form factor and we can uh, in fact say uh, we may proudly say that uh, these two small form factor probably have contributed a lot to the digital consumer evolution happened in the turn of this century um, the micro SD was followed by a few more major new versions as shown. We have ultra high speed versions and recently the SD Express. Uh, the SD standard evolution driven by SDA members is continuously evolved uh, following the market needs and technology evolutions. And uh, I think uh, the best proof of success for this standard is the fact that billions billions of SD and micro SD cards were sold by today and millions of products support it. Um, STA's uh, SD Express card is the answer that we see to the newly evolved market needs. SD Express includes uh, the well-known proven standard PCIe NVMe interface, besides the legacy SD interface, uh, that allowing uh, support of the new opportunities while still using um, the well-proofed and known form factors and being compatible to existing hosts in the market. Uh, the compatibility is through the UHS-1 interface. It is what we call generally best of all worlds. Um, SD7 uh, with the SD Express full size and SD7.1 with the micro SD Express were introduced during 2018 and 2019 supporting PCIe 3.1 interface and SD8.0 that was introduced in 2020 is the full size SD that may support two lanes of PCIe Gen 4. Um, beside, uh, I mean, adoption of PCIe and VME in SD Express allows to take advantages of all the various advanced capabilities of those protocols. In addition, the uh, sequential bitrate capability got quite big boost. If we compare the speeds of SD Express with the widely used UHS-1 interface with SD7.0 or 7.1, the bitrate is increased by about 10, as we can see. And uh, with a uh, newly 
introduced SD 8.0 standard that supports PCIe Gen 4 and up to two lanes, the bitrate becomes up to 40 times faster than UHS-1 or more than 10 times faster than SD UHS-2. Uh, just to mention also, uh, the SD association driven by our members develop various specifications, documents, and fixtures that may allow easier adoption of new standards. The various documents may be downloaded from the SDA website. Actually, on the right side uh, of this presentation, you may have uh, some of these documents that can be downloaded as well. As you may see, we have released the SD Express host implementation guideline. This document may serve as a design guide for host products or system or chip developers how to implement SD Express host interface using existing PCIe interface as is. And SD interface, uh, uh, if they have it, uh, with the limited updates. Um, and also, um, it, it introduced how, how the SD drivers uh, should be updated, as you can see on the right. This is just a, a, a picture from, from this document. The PCIe drivers actually stay without any changes. Actually, the, the post implementation uh, that I'm going to talk in more details uh, in a few minutes uh, based on that. Um, SDA have built uh, with a third party uh, with Wilder Technologies, SD Express test fixtures that may be used for SD Express card and host test and it enables using existing PCIe test equipment. Those features are available for borrow at our approved labs and by our members. Uh, in addition, the, with SD 8.0 release, uh, we have updated our SDA brochure, as well as our two SD Express white papers. And now let's move to the SD Express host implementation. So uh, before we start the description of the SD Express host side, there is one important fact that I want to point out. In order to minimize the number of pins, the first row pins of any SD Express card is actually sharing the functionality of standard SD data lines and the PCIe sideband signals, the P reset, clock request, and reference clock. Uh, and the second row, or the third row, if exist, are used for the PCIe differential interface. Actually, this is a similar concept that we use with the UHS-2 solution. Now, uh, the SD Express host implementation uh, may be done in actually various ways. The implementation method that I will present here is based on the recommended SD host controller specification released by the SDA, which I uh, also the guideline which I mentioned earlier that can be downloaded by, by non-members. Um, the main advantage of this method is that the PCIe NVMe drivers may stay without any changes. It's only the SD drivers that will have to be slightly updated. This is a full picture of it. And in the next few slides, I will go over it in more detail, step by step. So let's go one by one. So initially, an existing SD host controller that supports SD 3.0 and above may be used. Those are the building blocks that I'm talking about. And now in addition, uh, we need to add an existing off-the-shelf PCIe port that support hot plugin. It means that it has a present detect input. And on top of that, we need to add the following new functionalities. VDD2 support, uh, supply on off control. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you have an SDUHS2 host controller, you should have this functionality there already as well. And also another signal, which is a PCIe NVMe interface enable control line that allows the SD drivers to indicate to the PCIe host port about card insertion. You will see in a moment everything, how, how it is actually operate in detail. And last, a four bit signal switch should be added to allow the dual usage of the SD data lines, either as data lines or as PCIe sideband signals. 
there are various ways to implement it. Uh, the most straightforward would be to use an analog switch, but also a simple tri-state drivers may be used because of the nature of the direction of the signals and the slow, relatively very slow speed. Um, this is the full circuit with the connector. And now let's see how it operates. So card is inserted. The SD host controller detects the card insertion and SD drivers are interrupted. SD drivers then checks whether the card support PCIe interface, communicate the card through the SD interface. And if card support PCIe interface, the SD drivers turns on VDD2, which supply VDD2 to the card, as well as switch the host signals to PCIe mode. In addition, the PCIe NVMe interface enable line is set, indicating to the PCIe port that the card supporting PCIe was inserted. And from the moment the PCIe port detects new card inserted, uh, the PCIe and NVMe drivers may start to operate with the card and use it as any other PCIe card using a standard drivers. Actually, the card introduces itself to the host as a standard NVMe device. Um, the uh, presented solution is based on a host that access the card first through its SD interface, as we saw, check if PCIe is supported, and then switch to PCIe mode. Host may also uh, implement, be implemented in another way in which host first uh, access the card through the PCIe interface. And if PCIe is not supported, switch to SD mode. This is also a possibility, and the specification allows that. And uh, my last slide, uh, note that uh, for fast and easy adoption, there are also full functional off-the-shelf PCIe or um, USB 3 interface to SD Express bridge solutions available in the market today. Such components are available by two SDA member companies, Bayhub and JMicron. As far as we know, there may be others as well. Uh, and um, so this is uh, something also that can be very easily used in order to uh, to implement such solution. So that was my, my last slide. If you will have any questions, please uh, send them on the chat. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Miki Takahashi from Grant Liba Labs. Um, in this session, I'd like to talk about um, SBP. Um, so GIL um, manages the test itself and then uh, program operation and uh, authorization by SDA. Let's get it started. Next, please. So first of all, um, SBP overview. SBP stands for SD Express UHS2 Verification Program. SDA allows the program itself, and um, 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 we provide a test capability for the members to check the uh, UHS2 uh, electrical conformance and the SD Express electrical and the PCIe Express um, protocol conformance as well. And when you pass the SBP, your product will be listed as a verified product. And then and the list uh, will uh, go to public. And SBP provides better interoperability and at the same time uh, for members, um, cost-effective option for the partial conformance test. <clears throat> and for schedule side, and we have uh, two options. Uh, one is the test shadow 
and this is fixed test schedule. But instead, um, the you um, participate in the NSBP for a little lower cost. And the first round shadow um, actually was closed on the September 13th. And now we planning on the next shadow and it will be around uh, January 2022. And the second option is on demand. If you can't wait until next shadow, um, you can just apply to your product, um, apply to the NSBP for your product, and then this will be um, performed immediately. So this is on demand, but um, you're gonna have to pay a little bit higher the fee uh, for on demand testing. But you can um, um, choose the uh, two options. Next, please. So let me talk about a little bit background of the SBP. Um, so in a, a UHS2 and as the express generation data rate gets higher and the protocol um, gets really complicated. At the same time, the risk of interoperability um, gets higher too. To avoid interoperability issue, you will need to test your product in detail. However, large investment is involved to create uh, your test environment um, from scratch. So now an SBP um, provides the, um, the cost-effective option to assess the uh, risk of the, um, um, uh, your product in terms of the signal integrity and a protocol. And uh, moreover, SDA is subsidizing SBP in a very initial phase, uh, which is now, to enable the program uh, very quickly. So I didn't mean to urge you to be a member, but but this is the um, um, limited time offer. That once the funds run out, um, it will be over. And then lastly, SDA will publish the list of the product. Um, and then the, the when you pass the SBP, and then your product will be listed. And then end user uh, will see the list as well. Even the non-member um, can look at the list. So this will be an incentive for members um, to participate in the NSBP as well. Next, please. So um, to participate in, in the NSBP, uh, what do you need to do in the, in the first place is um, to be a member of the SDA and I go to SBP webpage. So we have a SBP webpage in the member page. You'll be able to find the, um, a lot of information about SBP, including the instruction, the process, um, everything. So this is the left, um, the flow chart um, about the SBP procedure. The first thing you, you need to do is um, to go to um, SDA SBP uh, portal page to register your product. Uh, for this program. And then the once the, your application is accepted, and then you can ship the, your DUT to um, uh, Grant Labs, Labs, um, where we, we test your DUTs, and then we will test it. And then when you, um, the product passed this PP, your product will be listed in the list. Next, please. So this is the how the list looks like. Um, so we have a table, and then we put the, um, the listed date and the product type, and the company and the brand, and all, all these will be listed. And then upload it to the, um, the public website so um, everyone can, can see it. And it's a downloadable list and a sortable. Um, that we have a separate list available for UHS2 and X SD Express. And then uh, end user can look at the end of this list and then see which product uh, is qualified in certain uh, quality requirement. So then when, when they um, think about think of their buying some product, um, they may defer to the list. Next, please. So lastly, um, let me introduce the Granite Labs real quick. Um, we've been SDA, 
exec member since the 2013. And uh, we are SD Association designated lab. And um, actually, we are not making any SD card product itself, but um, the, we support um, SD card ecosystem for testing and a test solution. So if the member does, doesn't have any idea what, what to test, and then we we be here um, to help the members uh, with that. And the GIL headquarters is uh, located in the Silicon Valley, the way I am. And uh, we have a, a labs worldwide, uh, Europe, Asia, and India. So we cover the um, um, the, the many and you know, key regions to support the global supply chain. And we provide their service and a troubleshooting for SD card product and card and host, uh, whichever. And uh, we do have a test solutions itself as well. So we can sell the test solution um, to the members and the protocol and the electrical test solutions as well. And, um, and we run this BP um, as an ex exclusive design lab. Um, that's all uh, for me. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Um, all right, hello everybody. Uh, again, I'd like to thank you uh, for joining uh, this meeting. Um, my name's Anson Pond. I'm a senior product marketing manager for uh, Faizan Electronic Corporation. So um, today I'll walk you through all the possible uh, applications for an SD Express card. So just wanted to start with a, a, an overview um, of the Express, Express. So it was first released in June uh, 2018 as part of a SD 7.0. Um, it supported, um, it offers support for PCI Gen 3, uh, Gen 4, and then NVMe 1.3 and 1.4 interface. Um, it's based on the existing uh, SD form factor, and uh, it supports the legacy UHS-1 interface, which allows backwards compatibilities with uh, billions of host devices uh, throughout the world. Next. Okay, so the SD Express is basically um, an SD-like card, right? It has uh, the good things from a PCIe NVMe SSD, which is uh, the performance, um, you know, a market-wide platform, uh, scalability in the software stack, um, the bus mastering, so you can reduce uh, RAM and cost, and it leverages uh, existing investments uh, for card and product manufacturers. And then it also includes the good things from an SD card, which is the most popular removable card, uh, you know, on the consumer market. Um, it has enhanced features of uh, command queue and cache, and uh, the SD UH1 uh, operation mode is supported. So, it's a small SSD-like card, but it's in a reliable small SD form factor, and it, it includes all the backwards compatibilities for all the existing SD products. Okay. Uh, next, please. Okay, so why do we need uh, SD Express? Well, um, if you want, we learn, look at performance, right? So the theoretical sequential read and write transfers um, range from you know one, uh, you know almost one gig per, gigabytes per second to a maximum of four gigabytes per second. So uh, the increase um, in, in performance will be explained with the, you know the, the ever growing uh, digital content that's needed. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is why we need the, the higher performance, right? So there's larger content size now. So you have higher megapixels, you have you know longer videos that you want to shoot, higher uh, frame rates and, and uh, burst mode photo shooting where you're continuously taking uh, pictures or uh, VR and uh, AR content. And you know if you want to also record raw content, which is takes a large amount of files as well too. So um, there's you know also there's 8K uh, UHD, right? So there's a more resolutions. And then if you look towards the future, they're gonna get towards the 10K and the 16K uh, resolution. Next slide. Okay, so this is just to show there's the high uh, resolution content, right? So you've got uh, drones uh, that are out there that are taking videos and pictures uh, of everything. So it's the, the higher, um, the faster you're recording, the better it is, as well as um, with 360 degree cameras, and with 8K uh, video devices, right? So you've, you've gotten um, more content, more um, uh, resolution. So these these devices will increase the dependency that, that a memory card uh, with an SSD-like performance will have. Next slide. Okay, so, you know, it's a portable SSD-level storage, right? An SD card express is the smallest uh, portable card um, with SD level transfer, right? So you're looking at before when it was UHS, which is only 104 megabytes per second. 
um, UHS2, which is 312 megabytes per second, and then the SD Express, um, you know, 7.0, uh, which is a Gen 3 by 1 that can get you close to that one gigabyte or 985 megabytes per second. So um, in the future, since the, the SD card, uh, SD 8.0 has been announced as a Gen 4 by 2, you can get up to uh, close to four gigabytes per second uh, in the future. Right. So next card, next slide, please. But, you know, so um, what is it being used for, you know, with, uh, you know, you're starting with smart TVs and you're, 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 you're you know, evolving into smart homes and smart cars and you know probably smart cities too so the, the data and the information capacity um, that you have will always be increasing right so um, you know we need those designers that are designing these uh, cities and and you know cars and homes to look for the storage with the fast performance that can handle all this data that it's going to process okay. so next slide Okay, so um, so Fizon itself, uh, we do have an SD Express card solution in our uh, PS5017 controller. We made uh, a press release about it back in February um, that has that we were the first to ship uh, the, the SD Express card. Um, we also created a YouTube video, uh, so you can have the links there. So those are the links to our uh, P, uh, PR as well as the YouTube video. So if you have some time to go uh, watch the video, it walks you through the specs and uh, uh, the applications that are used, uh, uh, that are needed for our SD Express card. And uh, next slide. So this is our, our actual product offering. Uh, we're offering a 256 gig up to one terabytes uh, based on 3D QLC. Uh, the performance is there at um, 870, close to 900 megabytes per second on that. And uh, they're just uh, in, in those form factors as, as, as well. So. Um, if you have a chance to take a look um, at our website and, and go through those YouTube videos and take a chance, uh, take a look. Okay. And that's with that. That's my last slide. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Zinong Fan. I'm a technologist from Amphino. Today, I'm going to talk about SD Express Interconnect solution. Next slide, please. So as a part of uh, SD Express ecosystem, Amphino contributes uh, interconnect uh, solution to the uh, ecosystem. Uh, what we do is a uh, micro SD and uh, SD Express um, uh, as connectors. And uh, that uh, is uh, physically attached to the uh, host board and accept the SD and micro SD card and establish the electrical link. Next slide. As far for the uh, micro SD Express uh, connector, we already have one tool tab. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, two um, contact row uh, on the micro SD Express card uh, uh, connector. And uh, that is compatible to UHS-1 and the UHS-2 uh, micro SD card. Uh, next slide, please. As for the uh, speed-wise, uh, the connector can go up to uh, an Express, uh, PCI Express uh, Gen 4 with a good enough margin. Uh, so this is uh, actually can uh, provide a, a, a micro SD Express card Gen uh, a PCI Gen 3 and Gen 4 uh, without uh, changes uh, connector. Next, uh, uh, next slide, please. So actually, there are the three type of micro SD card on market. So UHS 1, UHS 2. Uh, and uh, micro SD Express um, as of as of today. So um, the previous uh, um, micro SD Express uh, socket uh, can accommodate uh, the uh, both UHS one and the UHS two. Uh, sorry, UHS one and uh, uh, micro SD Express. So um, the um, it will be nice. It also takes the uh, UHS two. Um, micro SD card. Um, so this is, this will be a difficult uh, um, task actually. So when you look at the uh, micro SD card uh, golden finger position, 
So the UHS-2 and uh, microSD Express card, uh, although has a second row uh, golden finger, but they are at a slightly off uh, position. So that uh, will be challenge task, but Amphano uh, took this challenge and uh, started a new development. Um, we will have uh, uh, parts soon to accommodate uh, these three microSD card for one socket. So we are trying to enable one for all solution. Next slide. So as, uh, as of the uh, SI side, uh, this socket uh, can uh, can go up uh, on PCI Gen 4 as well with a good enough margin. So you don't need to switch between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 when you switch the card. Uh, next slide. So uh, to enable this uh, one for all solution, uh, we certainly need help from ecosystems. And uh, uh, BiHub is a controller provider. They are actually uh, enable the controller uh, for all this uh, one controller for all these three type uh, microSD as well. So this uh, really help the uh, customer to build the solution. Next slide. So as, as for the um, SD Express card, um, um, we also tooled up a, a socket. Uh, so this is, uh, um, this is a, a two row uh, connector and uh, it's uh, as uh, as you can see since the uh, this three type uh, SD card has compatible golden golden finger position, so this is uh, one socket can accommodate all three uh, SD card. And next slide. So this is all what what I want to present today, and if you need more information you may uh, reach out uh, uh, to this email uh, on the on the screen and uh, thank you everyone uh, for for joining oh, hi everyone um julia huang senior marketing manager from lesa uh lesa is a is a memory storage brain with over 25 years and is particularly dedicated to memory cards for camera users in retail markets. We are one of the manufacturers to actively develop SD Express card and plan to launch it soon in 20, 20, uh, 2022. Uh, in my presentation, I'm going to show you a product overview, status, and the future application of our SD Express card. Next slide, please. Uh, with testing one uh, 28 and uh, two 56 gigabyte capacities, uh, the screenshot read speed is 824 megabytes per second. Uh, screenshot write burst speed is 410 megabytes per second. Render read write speeds are around 400 and uh, 350 megabytes per second. Our SD Express cards with uh, SD 7.1 PCIe Gen 3 by one. Uh, in capacity of uh, 128 to 512 uh, gigabytes. Uh, they are built on SMI controller and uh, WVX for 3D TLC flash and uh, with the power performance the throttling function. Uh, so far, we did a UHS-1 compatibility test and uh, passed the read readers test with uh, SD 7.1 host from four companies. And we are uh, doing the compatibility test of the new launch laptops. Next slide, please. Uh, we also do, did the thermal test to measure power consumption of the campaign SD Express and the SD UHS-1. The test is uh, go reading and writing of the 20 gigabytes data uh, with uh, using same flash type and the capacity of the 256 gigabytes. Uh, the test results show the power consumption of SD Express is about three times higher than SD UHS-1. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, let's adapt the 
advanced feed chip packaging technology for the cars. Uh, campaign, campaign to traditional white bonding. Feed chip has excellent electric property and the thermal control. And with the array the pad design, feed chip can have the higher pin count within Sendai size and also gradually reduce the size, weight, and cost. Uh, for the next plan of the SD Express, we will go at SD 8.0 Gen 3 by 2 and the high capacity evaluations. The challenges are the first, thermal control for small size of the SD and micro SD with the high PCI performance. And second, packaging capability for high capacity of the 512 gigabytes to 2 terabytes. And third, uh, require more host manufacturers to participate and uh, develop products with the new interface. The Let Hub uh, is the first to support SD Express car. Uh, currently, there are three companies to launch their new Let Hubs with uh, SD 7.0 slot. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, the status of host adoptions with the SD 7.0 uh, is on bridge chip and the computer manufacturers. But we know the speed of SD Express is essential for high resolution content applications. We expect to see more applications in the areas of uh, AK video recording, professional DVD SLR, high uh, resolution 3D gaming computing and drone shooting for uh, retail OEM markets in, uh, in 2022. Okay, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon, my name is Rick Deal. I am the Applications Engineer for Accelerated Memory Production, or AMP Inc. It is indeed my pleasure to be counted among so many great presenters from so many great companies here today. To Charlene, Belinda, and the Honorable Cause, thank you very kindly. My primary objective um, is to present AMP Inc., uh, provide an intro to AMP Inc. and some of its product offering. Uh, there are just so many great things I'd like to say about AMP Inc. today. And given that I am the penultimate presenter today, I plan to take the next three or four hours to talk about AMP Inc. Just kidding, just kidding. Actually, I will be brief in my remarks since at the end of this presentation, there's a link to AMP Inc.'s website where you can find out more information about AMP Inc. at your leisure. So uh, if you take a quick glance at our agenda, here are some of the topics that I'd like to highlight today. Next slide, please. Ambient is a full service memory module design, development, manufacturing, di distribution company. Uh, that is memory modules of many types and many form factors, including but not limited to SD Express. And Inc is headquartered in Santa Ana, California, in Southern California, about 40 miles from LAX. AMP Inc. Produ uh, products are deployed in a wide array of industries and markets, including but not limited to commercial, industrial, military, and space applications, space as in NASA and JPL type applications. We also provide standard OTS memory solutions and more advanced and custom memory solutions, especially for the military and space marketplace, where rugged and radiation hearted solutions are vital. AMP, of course, provides fully integrated end-to-end -end, cradle-to-grave R&D and manufacturing customer support, which is especially important to the military customers who often require, emphasis require, long product lifecycle support. Next slide, please. This slide itemizes just a few categories of a few of the AMP product offerings. 
the exhaustive list is much, much larger than what is itemized here. So please, again, see the AMP Inc. website at your leisure. Next slide, please. Um, just want to emphasize once again our AMP Inc. value proposition, especially in the you know, military and uh, space application markets where our customers uh, often require uh, lifetime support and uh, and something that perhaps some of you are not uh, familiar with, but a locked bomb. But that means that we won't change the configuration on a particular solution um, upon customer request over the life cycle of that product, because that may be important to that customer, given that uh, DOD requirements often require that the bomb cannot be changed. And of course, we provide full spectrum SD Express compliance testing. What is missing from this slide is our unique ability to provide customer military pro product solutions, which are often required by the military and space and mining and other rugged environment markets. This slide provides uh, just an illustration of um, some of the features on our most current SD Express product offering. Next slide, please. Um, commonly shared feature set, feature set, excuse me, uh, for an SD Express product. Next slide, please. Uh, what you see here is an illustration of not just form factor and pinout, but our AMP Inc. real world SD Express product offering, shipping to customers now, emphasis shipping to customers now in the densities that you see there. Next slide, please. We're very excited and please forgive the apparent immodesty, but we are also quite proud, quite proud to indeed be able to leverage our in-house expertise and our partnerships with military hardware and cybersecurity communities to have in the works right now, R&D to provide a layered data security infrastructure, infrastructure to our future SD Express product offerings, which will include, but is by no means limited to the security building blocks, such as you see on the slide there. Next slide, please. Again, please see the AMP Inc. website at your leisure, and please keep in mind that AMP Inc. is a custom memory module developer, so if you do not see a solution which meets your specific needs on our website, please contact AMP, AMP Inc and we will be happy to take your custom design needs. Thank you very kindly. Good afternoon, last but not least. I am Jen Sherry, and I'm from Delkin Devices. Today I'm here talking to you about Delkin Devices SD Express memory cards. First, a little bit about Delkin. Delkin is a U.S. manufacturer of, of memory cards included, and that is the soon-to-come SD Express. One ex exciting thing about Delkin this year is that we are celebrating our 35th anniversary, so we've been around a long time. Um, that's actually our headquarter building um, based down in San Diego, California, and Poway is the town if you're familiar with the area. And in addition to the US headquarters, we do have a UK office outside of Birmingham, so a couple hours outside of London. Um, we also contract with a Japanese agent outside of Tokyo, Japan. And then we also have a hired government programs officer that helps oversee all of our government bids and things of that nature for the US government. The last thing I wanna mention about Delkin is that we are split into two sides of the business. So you'll even notice that we have two websites. One is the retail side, and that's the retail packaged parts, um, primarily um, products to the photo channel and in different markets of that nature. And then we also have um, our industrial side, which is all built, custom built to order products for all sorts of, of customers um, that are very that have very specific needs on the industrial team. All right, so the question of the day is can we launch SD Express memory cards? Um, without SD Express host. And Delkin's thoughts on this after some very extensive preliminary testing um, is yes. So what we were are seeing in our tests is that SD Express cards used in regular UHS-1 or UHS-2 slots are giving us some 
advantages. Um, we are seeing it improve our workflow. We're seeing it um, act slightly faster with the buffer and different things in a camera. And then we're also future proofing our customers' needs, um, you know, all in all in one. So um, that is something that Delkin always strives to do. It allows our customers to gain our trust. Um, and, you know, so we could highly recommend SD Express cards uh, currently and to our market um, and give them all the reasons why. One thing that's very important um, about being able to launch SD Express is, to Delkin is that we have to have an SD Express card that is backwards compatible. So, you know, if SD Express cards were a standalone and, you know, like some of our opposing standards um, that, you know, have changed the, the physical sizes and, and connections and things, it'd be totally different. What we are seeing is that since the SDA has done such an exceptional job with keeping that same SD card size and, and specifications essentially that we know and love, and now they're allowing it to be faster and for the capacities to um, increase, all in the same size, and you know now it's backwards compatible, so it's it's really packaged very nicely. Um, the backwards compatibility is key, and um, we're looking forward again to launching. Um, you know, very, very soon. One of the things that's great about Delkin is that not only do all of us hold specific job titles and whatnot, but most of us are also photographers. And what this allows us to do as a company is to do real, a lot of real world tests. So in this case, um, we most recently, we chose the Canon R5, but we've tested a number of, of the latest cameras. And we took a 512 gigabyte memory card. So we took a UHS-1 512 gigabyte, and we took a 512 gigabyte SD Express Delkin card. And where we saw the biggest difference is in the wait time to take the next set of photos. So in the Canon R5, um, you're able to shoot about 58 photos of RAW and JPEG combined at the highest resolution. So when you shot with a UHS-1 card, the time to take the next set of photos was seven seconds. When we plugged in an SD Express card into that non SD, ex, ex, SD Express slot, that wait time to the next photo is less than half of a second. So, again, without even SD Express hosts, besides a few laptops, as we all know, we're still being able to see that huge workflow difference. Same thing when we're talking about the wait time to completely clear the camera buffer. That goes from 41 seconds with a UHS-1 card, um, and that drops to 34 seconds um, you know, to completely clear the buffer when we pop in a SD Express uh, card. So really cool to see, and that was you know, really important to us in, in our preliminary testing. Um, these are some of our Vulcan SD Express initial specifications. Again, we're we're in final testing, we're tweaking firmware, we're doing all the things that are very normal in this industry, as, as most of you know. Um, so essentially, our, our initial launch will be an SD Express 256 gigabyte and a 512 gigabyte with the intention, of course, to add larger capacities um, as quickly as possible. And those are the initial read and write speeds um, with a focus for us anyway, for Delkin, is to, to really rely on some of those really fast sustained speeds that, that we're planning to get out of SD Express. So what is next? Um, final testing, I think, is is obviously most important. Um, again, as we you know finalize some firmware items and continue our conversations with host manufacturers. So, if you're a host manufacturer out there, please contact us. We're happy to start those conversations with you as you work um, this type of slot into your you know next host. Um, we're working with manufacturers now and and working towards the future. So, we've got a lot of things um, in the works that we're happy to share with you and um, educate you on. And and you know we can absolutely build something that's specific for your hosts and needs. Next, we go into full production and then we'll have the market launch. Say so we're very close to market launch. So all these last tidbits are just, you know, um, dotting I's and crossing T's. And so we're looking forward to coming out with Delkin SD Express. And lastly, I will leave you with our five scenario. We are in the business to give our customers the best option for them for the future. So we feel very confident that Delkin SD Express will do that. Um, we feel very confident that it will improve their workflow um, even without SD Express hosts. Um, and we are looking forward to launching and to talking with all of you. Thank you so much for your time.